Welcome again. You might have seen this model before. It's the icon for this channel. In several videos, I have used this model to explain the structure and the workings of environmental systems. I've described this particular model as a closed system because it exchanges no matter with the outside and it receives only light from the outside for photosynthesis and it exchanges heat with the outside. This too is an example of a closed system receiving only light from the outside and exchanging heat with the outside. With the cover removed it now becomes an open system able to exchange gases with the outside an actual exchange of matter. This is the difference between closed systems and open systems. But perhaps you've heard people refer to models of this kind as terraria or a terrarium or an aquarium or even a vivarium. Perhaps you've heard the term macrocosm for the big picture or the term microcosm for a tiny representation of something much bigger. But biologists also use a term called the mesocosm. And the mesocosm is particularly useful because it allows the researcher to set up a controlled environment, whether that environment be a closed system or an open system, but a controlled setting where a single or a few independent variables can be manipulated while other variables are controlled and it would then give reliable results with respect to some effect or the dependent variable. So the term mesocosm, it's really just a fancy biological term for some controlled system that you can have, a model of the bigger natural environment or the macrocosm. And in actual research, mesocosms are not usually this small. They tend to be quite large at times, occupying large aquaria or even spaces as large as a swimming pool. Marine biologists in particular have made widespread use of mesocosms in understanding the behavior of these aquatic systems. Let's have a look now at some other mesocosms. And you can clearly see the high levels of moisture that are trapped within the system. Providing ideal conditions for plants like algae and mosses to thrive. Here you have an aquatic mesocosm with the shrimp here visible in your picture being supported by a variety of aquatic plants. This particular system is open with no cover placed on the aquarium but no materials are introduced into this system and it sustains itself by producing all of the food it needs and only light and gases are exchanged with the outside. At times lids are placed over the aquarium and it sustains itself with the sole input of light from the outside. When biologists have systems like these at their disposal they are very easily able to control variables and to manipulate a single particular variable to investigate its effects. Here you can see a simple investigation into the effect of humidity on the growth of moss using mesocosms. 